and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a very energizing soap using caffeine powder and essential oils of orange and lime. So very citrusy, very bright. And this is a bar that I would suggest using in the AM of the day, the morning. I would not use this before bed. And I also wouldn't recommend this soap for children. It's one of the very few soaps that I would say not for young people, unless you wanna caffeinate your young people. Um, our skin is the biggest organ in our body. And you can, there are a lot of medicines that are done transdermally. And so when you put something on your skin, it can absorb in and uh, have effects on, <laughs> on things. So, so caffeine is one of those things if you put it on topically you can get a little uh, caffeine waking up with it so um, I will talk about the percent of caffeine that you can use in a, a body product uh, it's about one to five percent we'll talk more about that later and here is my sort of cheater budget friendly way to get caffeine uh, powder in my products so you can buy caffeine extracts, um, powders, or liquid form caffeine extracts from distributors, wholesale supplies, I think Brambleberry. There are several out there. If you just type in caffeine extract, you can get that. Um, but I make my own. It's very inexpensive. And what I did was I hopped on down to my local drugstore and Walmart. Anybody who carries these type of uh, awake caplets, they are just simply caffeine tabs. And read the ingredients and make sure there's no other stuff in there. This is just caffeine and a little coating on it to make them easier to swallow. And I put this in my coffee grinder and I ground it up into a powder. So, um, <laughs> and you wanna wear a mask when you do that because if you inhale any of the dust from this, you will get the jitters. So be cautious when you're dealing with caffeine. If you're caffeine sensitive, I would omit this out of the soap recipe and don't even go there. <laughs> but if you're not caffeine sensitive, caffeine topically has some really amazing benefits. Now I'm making a bar of soap that will get you clean. And I'm gonna tell you what caffeine does. You can marry the two together if you choose, but this bar of soap will clean you up. It's gonna cleanse your skin and that's what it does. But caffeine has um, purported to have pore tightening. Uh, a lot of people will do it under their eyes. I make a caffeinated eye cream because I get baggy under eyes, crepey baggy under eyes at my age. I'm 56 and uh, so that's a thing. <laughs> um, but it can tighten pores, it can energize, it's, it's very stimulating to the blood vessels on the surface of your skin. So I think it's great. Uh, again, this bar is very energizing, so I would use it in the morning. I would also use it as a face soap. I have used it as a face soap. I've made this in the past, and I think it's just fabulous. So let me move off the caffeine. We'll talk more about that when we get into making the soap. I will add it to my oils, by the way, with my additives. That's how I add it to the soap. We'll talk about it when we get there. Um, Let's talk about the essential oils today. I'm using essential oils. I don't do that very often. I'm a fragrance girl. I love essential oil soaps, and I have some soap friends that I follow on Instagram and here on YouTube that are exclusively essential oil or no scent. They're just all natural. Much respect. I think they're beautiful. I love essential oils. They're pricey and you have to anchor them to get them to last longer in your soap. They fade out quicker than fragrant oils do. So um, today I am using lime essential oil and sweet orange. I got this one from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I got this one from Amazon. Um, and so these are the essential oils and I will be measuring out what I need for this recipe and anchoring it with my kale and clay that I normally put in the oils. I'm gonna put it in my fragrance or my essential oils and let it really absorb in there. That is supposed to help the essential oils last longer, especially through the saponification process. Um, so I'm hoping, because these smell really bright and, and lovely together. So with those two, the orange and the lime, here's the colors I chose. I have Lime Green Mojito from Wholesale Supplies Plus and Tangerine from Be Scented. I thought those are gonna represent the fragrance, the energizing of the caffeine. I just thought these are bright and happy and that's what I'm going for. It's gonna be like a little sunshine in your shower in the morning, that's what I wanted. I'll be using aloe vera juice in the lye solution today, and um, I will take you through how I mix that. Uh, I get asked a lot, aloe vera juice, aloe vera gel, can I use fresh aloe vera? If you scraped out the pulp of an aloe vera stalk or leaf or whatever you call it, I'm not sure the technical name, but if you 
scrape that out and you have that, that is aloe vera gel. It's great in soap, but it's not the same as working with aloe vera juice. Gel would be an additive that I would blend into the oils with my other additives. Juice, I mix it 50-50 with distilled water. It's very liquidy and I use it like water. I mix it with my lye, that becomes my lye solution. And I will take you through that. I've had a couple of requests and um, it's, it's pretty simple and I will show you exactly how I do that. So let me get everything pulled together and uh, we will come back and talk all about the details of making a caffeinated bar of soap. <laughs> I don't know why it strikes me funny, but it's awesome. So let's do that. Let's come back and make some citrusy caffeinated soap. All right, we're back and it's time to make my aloe vera lye solution. And so here is a stainless steel pot. Uh, you can use glass or stainless steel is what I recommend. You can use a poly plastic also working with sodium hydroxide, but I prefer stainless steel for mixing my lye water in. I just, it's a personal preference, but um, that's up to you. <laughs> so anyway, here's my stainless steel pot. I have my scale zeroed out here. And here is the aloe vera juice that I am using today. I get this in the pharmacy section at Walmart. I've seen it at Target. It's this fruit of the earth. And it is, what does it say? Can't read upside down. 99.8% pure, so pure aloe. There's just a little preservative in there, which doesn't bother me at all. But anyway, this is the aloe vera juice and you can see how liquidy it is. So it behaves like water. So yeah, I treat this like water. I will do a 50% aloe, 50% distilled water mix here in my pot for the volume that I need. Um, what else can I tell you about this? When you find this, it's like I find it in the uh, pharmacy section at the store and they have a flavored version, don't get the flavored version. You just want the plain unflavored so there's no extra ingredients in there. It's really straight up, it's great. And I just love how this feels on the skin. I think aloe vera has some really awesome properties. So I like to throw it in soaps a lot of the time. If I'm not doing a goat milk soap, more than often than not, you'll see me using aloe vera juice. So here's my juice. So. I have my scale turned here. I'm gonna do 50% aloe vera juice, and then I'll grab my water and do 50% water, and I will show you how I add my sugar and silk and all the good stuff that goes into my lye pot. So move that out of the way. This is distilled water. I saved an aloe vera container and I just pour into here because it fits on the shelf in my fridge. I keep this and the aloe juice in the refrigerator. So this is very cold, but it, you know, definitely not frozen. So here's my water, I'm gonna do 50% water. There we go. Okay, so there is the liquid portion. So now that I've got all the liquids measured out here, I'm gonna add my cane sugar. I need to get some more of that. It's just natural, unrefined cane sugar is what I use. You could use powdered sugar, white sugar. You don't have to use sugar at all. Sugar is a lather booster. It really helps create and build and support lather in a soap bar. So that's why I add it. It's just an additive. It doesn't um, add or change the volume of your soap or anything. It's just something extra. This is a two tablespoon scoop and it's a little shy. I don't have it full all the way. I'm gonna add that in there. One thing to note, if you're adding sugar to your soap to help with the lather, it can cause your soap to heat up. So you wanna keep an eye on it. Um, I've gotten very familiar with my soap studio where I work is very cool and so I don't have a problem. I'll put this in the mold with the lid on and a blanket over it and I don't have an overheating problem. But it is something to be aware of. If you have a warm house or a warm work area and you add sugar, just you know, be cautious. Peek at your soap if, if you want gel face or if you don't, throw it in the fridge. I like to gel my soaps, that's my personal preference. I am a geller. So I'm just stirring this until the sugar is all dissolved. You don't wanna add the sugar after the sodium hydroxide. It will not dissolve. It will kind of caramelize and scorch and get clumpy. So if you have it all dissolved in there before you add the lye, it's much smoother going. Trust me, <laughs> I learned from the school of hard knocks, which is where I learned most of my things. I'm one of those people where you can tell me and tell me and I kind of have to make my own mistakes to really learn to bring it home. I wish it wasn't that way. I love when people share wisdom with me and 
I'm, as I get older, I'm learning to listen to wisdom and not have to make those hard lessons on my own. But sugar was one of them. I added, I forgot it one time. I threw it in after the lie and it ruined the entire batch. It just clumped in there and crystallized. It was not pretty. All right, that is looking pretty dissolved. So now I whip out my jar of Tussa silk fibers. When I use this up, I think next time I'm gonna get mulberry silk. I, I have used mulberry silk and I, I think it's a little bit finer and it melts a little quicker, but the end result in the lather, that silky glossy feel is the same for me. So Tussa silk, mulberry silk, it's all good. Now, if you are doing a vegan soap, you can't use silk fibers from a worm because it's an animal product, but I have heard of people using corn silk and having really good success. So uh, I have not tried that, but I'm throwing it out there. If you don't like to use any animal products, try corn silk and see how it goes. Or, um, oh, what other kind of silks are there? Bamboo silk, I think I've heard of that. Anyway, this is one of those deals where even a jewelry scale is not going to weigh this for me. Oops, it is so light. I can't tell you how much this weighs, but I can show you about, so for that big triple tall skinny workshop heritage mold I use, I will use about this much silk. Now I've got it pulled out thin right now, but if I squish it up, it's you know like the size of a small marble. But the way I do it is I pull it out, kind of stretch it. I used to snip it up into tiny bits and that works great too, but I get lazy so I'm not snipping. I just pull it out, sink it to the bottom. Now I'm gonna go get my lye, get my gloves on and then I'm gonna get my lye out. All right, so I've got my silk sunk down in there. Here is my sodium hydroxide and I'm gonna go ahead and just plop it all in here. It, it's just that easy, it doesn't take any special now I like to stand back so I'm not breathing the fumes and I'm gonna stir this until I don't feel any grit until it's completely dissolved. And then you can stop stirring and let it cool naturally or ice bath it. I'm gonna go pop this in an ice bath cause that's how I roll. <laughs> but um, you could pre-make this the night before and let it sit overnight to cool. That is totally fine. Just make sure it's in a safe place where nobody is gonna bump it or be exposed to it. And you can, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you can see the steam rising off. This gets very hot. So I'm not feeling any grit. Let me grab my thermometer and show you how hot this is. So remember, this went from refrigerator cold, aloe juice and water, to almost 200 degrees. So that's nothing to mess around with. It's a good chemical reaction going on there. This is chemistry at its finest. And then again, when we add it to the oils, I think it's just fascinating how to make soap. I love the chemistry of soap making. So this is pretty much it. The only other thing I'm gonna to add to this is my sodium lactate. I got this from Brambleberry. They have a very fair price on their sodium lactate. If Wholesale Supplies Plus or Nature's Garden is having a sale, I'll grab it there. But Brambleberry had the best price when I needed it, so this is the one I got. And you add this at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils. So that, I'm gonna let this cool down just a little bit, you know, maybe to 150, and then I add the sodium lactate. And that's what goes on in the lye pot. All right, and here's what it looks like in my ice bath. And uh, I just usually let this sit until all the ice cubes are melted. And so what I'll do when I have this going, I'll go get my oils prepped and film adding the additives to my oils and all of that as this is cooling. And usually by the time I get done with all that, this is ready to go. And I'll take the temperature and see if it's ready and close to my oil temps. And uh, I don't waste the water. I After I pull this out, I always save my water and go water the porch plants on my front porch or the back porch, or I have plants all over the place, but I use this water to water plants when I'm done cooling down my ice bath. So no waste. Okay, all I can say is, wow, I uh, was measuring off my lime essential oil here for the soap, getting my essential oils prepped and look how dark that is. I'm really hoping it doesn't discolor the soap too much. I might add a touch of TD in here just to lighten it up because uh, I was surprised by how dark that is, but it smells fantastic. So let me finish measuring these out and we'll come back for the additives. Right, we're back for soap additives and I will be adding my kale and clay to the essential oils and letting that kind of fully absorb for a while. Here is my caffeine slurry, my caffeine powder. So what I did was uh, I explained how I 
ground up the caffeine pills and I had a powder and I wanted to rehydrate that so that it wouldn't make a grit. I don't want an exfoliating soap. I just want the caffeine. So I used about an ounce and a half of warm water to dissolve it. And then I ended up adding a little titanium dioxide in here also because these pills had a little yellow coating on it um, and it made a yellow slurry. So I, with that and the dark color of the essential oils, I thought a little TD would be in order here. So I have my caffeinated slurry and I did the math, uh, broke down the milligrams per caplet of, of you know the caffeine powder, figured out how much I had. And once I get this into bar form, each bar of soap will have approximately 50 to 75 grams of caffeine in it. Milligrams, sorry, not grams. <laughs> no, 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 milligrams of caffeine in it. So a little bit, just enough to give your skin a nice energizing tingle. So let's get this blended into the oils here and make sure it's nice and smooth. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my colloidal oats right on in here with that. And then we will get to our kale and clay and essential oils. Make sure I got the right container. All right, two tablespoons of the oats go in. And let's get this blended up and then we'll hit the essential oils. All right, now I'm gonna add my two tablespoons of kale and clay right on into these essential oils. Boy, it smells bright and just vibrant. I love this fragrance blend. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and blend that in and let that sit while I get my colors prepped and get everything prepped and ready to go. Just a few minutes so that that clay can really absorb into the essential oils. Citrus essential oils are notorious for fading out. Essential oils in general don't last quite as long as fragrant oils sometimes. Um, and so I really wanna anchor these. Many of my friends that do all natural soaps claim that the kale and clay really helps. So we're counting on it, let's try it. Boy, that is just, I can't believe how green that lime essential oil was. That surprised me a whole bunch. All right. I'm just gonna let that sit while I go get the rest of my things prepped and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. The lye solution is cooled. I just took the temperature at 78 degrees. This is running about 80 degrees. We're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and add my essential oils and clay into the oils and get them blended. Citrus oils tend to slow down trace, so I'm hoping that we won't have anything speeding up on us today. We're just gonna proceed with caution, but I wanted to get that really well and incorporated and throughout the entire batch of oils before we add the lye solution. And for the top of the soap, after I get it poured in there, I'm hoping to do a hanger swirl with these lovely colors. And on the top, I will see if I wanna do like a chevron, but I have my hair pick here that I wanted to use somehow. Maybe I'll just do stripes or wavy stripes. I was thinking of energy and waves. And so I grabbed my comb, my little hair pick comb out and uh, we'll use this some way or another. Let's get that blended in first. With the TD in there, I don't think it's gonna discolor too much with those essential oils. Right now, it's just a beautiful sort of light avocado green. <laughs> mm. Oh, those citrus essential oils just smell divine. Okay, let's get our aloe vera lye solution and you already know what all is in here, so Let's get it poured in here and make some soap.
the next day and I'm very excited to get in here and see the swirls and this top kind of cracked me up. I did the comb, you know, you saw, and I started playing with it and it wasn't coming out the way I had imagined and I, I just had to walk away. I'm like, okay, I need to stop messing with this or it's just gonna get worse, but I think it's cute. I did come down and steam the top. I didn't have soda ash, but it was a little dull and because the top is very simple, um, I wanted it to be glossy. So, I mean, that's, that's a cute top, right? But um, yeah, I just, it was one of those where I thought if I just keep messing with this, it's gonna not go well. So there it is. Let's get this out of the mold and see how that hanger swirl came out on the inside. back with the lovely Olga and it's time to get in here and I'm surprised I don't know if you can pick it up but I have a teeny little bit of glycerin rivers going on it's been a long time since I've had that happen and I think I know why and I'll explain here let me get this lined up <laughs> trying to multitask okay so glycerin rivers um I normally do an extremely steep discount on my liquids in my soap and uh, it really helps prevent glycerin rivers. Um, and this one, because I was showing you the tutorial, on, oh, maybe it's not bad. No, it's really cool, actually. Look at those swirls. Okay, let me just talk about that for a second, and I'll get back to glycerin rivers. Oh, these smell really, really good. And I think the colors are beautiful and muted, the swirls. Super happy with that. And I'm really hoping that this kale and clay helped anchor those, um, essential oils so that they will stick around. Yeah, I would really love if this uh, fragrance stuck around because it the um, going along the theme with the caffeine, it's a very energizing scent. Love that. So Glycerin Rivers, yeah. I was showing you all the how to use aloe vera juice tutorial and I made my lye solution and I forgot that I had added almost two ounces of liquid to the caffeine powder to rehydrate. So just a little bit more water than normal, which is still a discount. So um, yeah, that's how I like to roll. Look at how cute the tops look now on the cut bars. I was just really wondering when I was fooling around with that hair comb, like, come on. And it wasn't, I thought it would make deeper grooves and kind of peak up and it didn't, but I think that's really cute. So call me happy, I'm happy with these. All right, let's get into the next loaf. Loving the swirls, by the way. All right, let's get into the next loaf. So the caffeine, that's a, um, it's an interesting topic. I myself am a coffee drinker. I do appreciate caffeine for what it is. I don't over abuse it though. I'm not like, you know, I'm careful. I only have one or two cups of coffee every day, but I do enjoy it. My husband has switched to decaf um, for health reasons, and I'm very proud of him for that. And I tried it for a while, <laughs> and it was fine. I went through a couple days of being headachy as I had caffeine withdrawals. If anybody's ever done that, you know how that rolls. And it was fine, but I actually just didn't like the flavor of decaf. And there is a book that I've been wanting to listen to. He has too, my husband and I. When we go on road trips to visit grandkids or go on vacation, we bring audiobooks along and listen to them together and discuss them. And there's a book called Caffeine Blues that I've been afraid to read or listen to. Uh, we couldn't find it on Audible, so I'm like, okay, it's not time to listen to that yet because I have a feeling it's gonna convict me about drinking my coffee. Um, but I still think caffeine topically is a different subject matter than ingesting it. I don't know, let me know what you think about caffeine and all of that. Are you a coffee or tea lover? Tea has caffeine too, not quite as much, but it's in there. Chocolate, hot chocolate has caffeine. It's, it's in a lot of things that we don't necessarily think of. 
um, but using it on your skin is a different matter. <laughs> Last but not least, loaf. So all that being said about caffeine, I know my husband will use this soap and it won't bother him to use it on his skin and he'll appreciate the little wake up in the morning, I think. Um, this was fun to make. Oh, these swirls are so pretty. So I did put titanium dioxide in the caffeine powder and that's why these swirls are so pastel color looking. And I think it's quite lovely um, because that, uh, and it's interesting. So look how ivory colored the, the bare soap is and remember how green that lime essential oil was. So um, I'm glad it's not green. I like this ivory color, but that's why these colors are very pastel looking. I think it's really, really pretty. I'm happy. Soap fascinates me. How it behaves differently with different additives, different temperatures. I just think it, the whole business is fascinating to me. And obviously I love it. Let's see, that one has a little bit of that effect if you can see it. Well, anyway, if you can't see it, it's there, but it's not on the inside, so it's all good. I mean, and that's the other thing too, glycerin rivers, there's nothing wrong with them. Your soap is perfectly fine. Some people think they're quite lovely. I mean, I've had glycerin rivers before that I thought were really pretty. Um, so they're not a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with your soap if you get them. So no worries there. So all that being said, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you taking the time and I hope you have a wonderful day.